All right, how are you? Good to see you. Our audience has stayed with us for the switchover as well, which is really good to see. Um, and it's still nice and sunny here in central London. So uh, hopefully we'll have a sunny webinar for the next half an hour. So this is a cozy finish to our day. Um, just me and Orit. And um, I will ask Orit to introduce herself in just a second. Um, but yeah, we're going to be having a one to one chat and, uh, and really talking about uh, scandalous shopping done right um, is our fourth and final subject of the day. And I know that Orit's got some really compelling insight and uh, content for you as well. So stay with us for the next half an hour and let's get started. Orit, introduce yourself to our audience. Well, thanks, Darren. And by the way, fantastic panel and a lot of relevant points for hours as well. So we'll we can reference them, right? We try. <laughs> so um, I'm Aurit Barad and I'm Portfolio Director with GK. Uh, without giving away my age, um, I've been in the industry for around 30 years now, worked with major players both on the software side and the retailer side, and with many retailers in many countries focusing on solution roadmap, strategy, and innovation. Great to have you here. And uh I've been around for a long time as well. And I can say we're both looking fabulous. So that's that's all we need to worry about. Age is just a number these days anyway. So thank you for sharing that. And thank let's, you. let's kick off um, with the subject matter. So let's start with GK, first of all. Let's just unpack that for our audience. Who is GK? So GK is a leading software company uh, providing commerce solutions for retailers over 30 years. And our customers are tier one, international, national, big retailers in over 65 countries and in all segments. So grocery and convenience, fuel, hospitality, fashion, luxury, health and beauty, speciality, I can continue. So I think you get the picture and it's the same commerce platform that's used for all these countries and all these segments. Um, and it provides, you know, the core commerce services that you would expect like promotion, basket calculation, tax, fiscalization, and so on. Um, and those are consumed by our own touch points and also can be used headless across channels and uh, consumer other um, devices or clients. So, you know, touch points going from a traditional point of sale to mobile point of sale to self-scanning and self-scanning bring your own device and self-checkout and scales and self-service scales and consumer um, engagement applications and employee applications and 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 so on and also our AI services which kind of made me really happy during the previous panel right with the focus on data and AI and automation um, that are used across all channels and all touch points as well. So um, mainly personalization, dynamic pricing and uh, fraud detection. And it's that same platform that's also used for our newest service, GK Go. Okay, so thank you for that, by the way. And I'm sure our audience now have a much better view of who GK is. So can you define what scanless shopping is or a, or a ghost store? What, what is that? So, sure. So scanner stores or go stores are stores where a person is not required to scan items or to check the consumer out. So, for example, the consumer doesn't have to unload their items at the, you know, the end of the shopping journey and then wait for somebody else to scan them, then pack them. And they also don't need to scan items themselves. And typically these stores will have uh, check in. Consumers will grab items and just walk out. Um, and they can be staffed, of course, and they can be autonomous stores. And but the formats that we're seeing go anywhere from small micro markets through what seems to be the sweet spot at the moment, uh, convenience stores, through full hypermarkets, and sometimes even just a segment of the store that's closed for uh, shopping, self-shopping during hours, which are kind of outside of the normal operating hours of the store. Thank you so much for explaining that. And um, again, I want to really continue that uh, exploration of these stores and having a store like that must be good for the brand to begin with? Yeah, so uh, first of all, of course, I mean, customers are experiencing having a much better consumer experience with removed friction, 
Um, and it is, it creates a buzz, right? It attracts people, it's uh, enticing. So it may also attract additional demographics to the one that traditionally shop um, with, um, with the retailer. And actually in a recent survey we've done with quite a few retailers, many of them said, I think about 50% said that attracting younger generation is one of, of the reasons for their ghost stores, which was interesting. Um, also, um, in many of them, many cases, they provide additional uh, availability, so elongated uh, service hours or addressing locations that the retailer typically would not address with their current formats. So these are kind of just a few and, and to name a couple of more um, benefits to the brand um, also, and this is where the differentiation starts, because um, because staff are not tied to a checkout spending items anymore, they are now available to do more meaningful uh, chores and more meaningful jobs. For example, um, you know, talking to consumers on the aisle and, and helping consumers as they shop. And because of the technology that's being used in the stores, um, we know a lot more about the consumer journey. So we learn a lot more about consumer behavior and we can utilize that knowledge and obviously retailers can utilize this knowledge in order to have deep insights, but also if done right, they can utilize it to influence their current in-flight consumer journey. So now that we've started touching on differenti differentiation, I can never say that word properly, differentiation, <laughs> uh, where do you see it? Yeah, so, I, well, you know, like anything good in life, the more there are now available and there are more ghost stores available and consumers have been shopping for a longer time in ghost stores. Also, um, whilst, you know, it's still innovative and attractive, consumers are starting and to, to see the, the additional possibilities and gaps in most prevalent formats. So, you know, on one hand, consistency and not having to learn how to shop every time you go to a store is a good thing. On the other hand, with most currently installed and available stores, there is some unnecessary um, journey rigidity, which consumers experience. So for example, you know, retailers uh, in most stores, in most ghost stores can only offer one way to enter the store or check, check in and um, a limited variety of items. Um, the kind of communication uh, with the shopper is basically pushed to until they're about to leave the store or in most cases a few minutes to a few hours after they've left the store and typically there's only one way to check out so from consumers perspective you know it kind of feels a little bit of um, the brands lost their identity right there's something very rigid repetitive and in other words retailers are at risk of losing that kind of breaching that unwritten social contract that they have with their consumers which is what consumers base their, base their expectations from the brand on um, and there are kind of many examples to name a few um, if you're used to shopping with your local grocery provider um, you may still experience that personal touch yeah that you come into the store and you have somebody to talk to somebody to chat to or on another hand it could could be that um, you know you, you're used to seeing you're going there for the bargains, right? So it's a specific type of retailer, and you're used to seeing that you're getting the best price, and you're used to seeing promotional items um, displayed or available in a certain way, which is not available anymore in the ghost store of the same retailer. In terms of um, another example, you can share. Do you have one? Yeah. So. Um, I, a few more, so if you think about high-end retailers, right? So let's say you are used to shopping with high-end end retailers, you shop with them online, you use their self-scanning in the store. So you're probably by now used to uh, kind of a glossy app where you can see additional content about the items, personalized information that is relevant to you. Uh, obviously you can see what's in your basket and you know your total so far and the promotions are being applied. Um, you can see how well Kind of your progress how well you're doing towards rewards um, and now enter the ghost store of the same retailer all of the sudden all of this is gone um, communication is pushed to until you're about to leave the store after you leave the store you don't know what's in your basket in real time um, you don't know that promotions are being applied as you shop and if you want to know how the items in your basket fit your preferences, you need to go back to reading the packaging and 
maybe even look the item online and not necessarily with that retailer's app. Um, a kind of another example, <laughs> I, mean, I could go all day with examples, but- That's fine, keep them going. <laughs> so if you, if you think about, um, not everybody feels comfortable or is able to use always the same card, the same payment card for every shopping journey. So as a consumer, you may be used, and most of us are used, to be able to choose which cards you're going to pay with you know, this time. Um, and whether you want to pay with a card, maybe you want to pay with PayPal or Klarna, or maybe you want to pay cash. And in most Go stores, um, that option doesn't exist. So um, if you um, check in, um, grab items and just walk out, you're typically pre-authorized on a specific card, and that's what you can use for the journey. And even in stores that have hybrids, so some consumers check in and just walk out and other consumers pay at kiosk, quite often in most currently installed solutions, the ones that pay at kiosks then still need to scan their items. So we're kind of telling them, well, if you want to pay at kiosk and not download the app, you cannot benefit from the scanless side of it and you are going to have to, to, to do that chore of getting items. So what can retailers do about that? So that's a really good question. So I think like everything else, go back to the basics, right? First of all, define the journey that you want to offer your consumer. Think about your brand identity and what they would expect from you in any other store. And retailers got this. I mean, they know their consumers and they have all the information available to know their consumers. So go back to that basic and then find the technology that enables that, enable you the flexible choice of a journey, end-to-end -end journey. Um, you know, allowing you to choose what entrance you want to provide, how much communication you want to have with the uh, consumer during the shopping journey, and um, how you want to check the consumer out, what options you want to give them for checkout, and so on. And that's what we set to achieve with GK Go. So tell me more, what is GK Go? Oh, <laughs> so, uh, thank you for asking, you know, that's, <laughs> that, that really I can talk about all day. So. Um, GK Go is a new service, uh, a new service of our cloud for retail platform, and it basically um, provides retailers with that flexibility to offer an end-to-end -end journey to the consumer where nobody needs to scan items, there is no need to queue to pay, but yet consumers can have all the information they want as they shop. And that um, is, is kind of also because we're using our um, platform, the, the same enterprise platform that is used in any other store format of the retailer. That means that they can also offer a flexible way to check in, a flexible way to check out. And uh, for our customers, um, it's the same platform that they use. There is consistency. So it's the same you know, basket calculation, promotion, pricing, and so on that they have in any other touch point and also they don't need to maintain another um, commerce platform for their ghost stores, which, which I think is obvious. Um, there are some other um, advantages. So um, ghost, our, our uh, GK Go um, service actually allows interaction with the consumer in real time. So there is um, an SDK or an app. So retailers can use the SDK in their own app or in our engagement app if they choose, choose to use it. And then they can visualize the, visualize the basket to the consumer as they shop. So, you know, what's in your basket, your total so far, your promotions, how well you're doing towards rewards um, and so on. Um, and also um, we, we give them more flexibility about the variety of, of items they can offer and how they want to handle interventions. So for example, how do you want to handle a checks? Uh, what are you going to do to do about restricted items? You know, items, for example, with re restricted quantity, um, or um, items that require top-ups. So, you know, like um, uh, you know, uh, th that require activation. So, like top-up cards and gift cards and um, lottery tickets and and so on. And then there's how they want to handle exceptions, right? So, what do you do when a consumer has just drank a can of Coke, put it back on the shelf? Do you want to nudge the consumer and give them some notification on the app? Do you want to send an immediate event to the employee app and let an employee know um, that something happened? 
Do you want to kind of stop them on their way out as you would do with the risk and in self scanning situation? Or do you want to just ignore them, ignore it and charge them for the Coke? So all of this is there. And um, these are um, in addition to the level of personalization and interaction that a retailer wants to do um, using our personalization and using the interaction app with the consumer. Um, these are all things that we flash out in discovery sessions with, with retailers to look at the options. So I think maybe we're it's gonna, time to take a breath. Yeah, we're going <laughs> to show you an example. Yeah, we're yeah. going to try a bit of uh, hopefully this works the video yeah. now. So um, Aurit is going to share a video uh, that show two consumer journeys from uh, the store. I want to say this hopefully correctly, Shonek. Shunek, yeah, I can't say it either. So. Uh, but it will be the video won't have any sound because Orit's going to narrate over it. So um, over to the video. Yeah, I'll try. So just to say, this is um, not the. Okay, hopefully I'm showing the right screen. Can you see now a video? Not yet. Yes, we can. Here it comes. Yep, we have it now. So I'm going to try to also see you, Darren. So. Um, here we go. Apologies for participants, so it's taking another second. It's okay. Okay. So, okay. yeah, uh, what you what you see here is actually from uh, the opening days of our staff trial store at Tunic, and this is not necessarily the ideal full blown store. So everything you see here is just. Um, relevant to the space, the size, the type of items that we want to offer there, and we did choose to use an app. So you're going to see two consumer journeys. You see Jenny just scanned the QR code. She's been pre-authorized, so she will be able to just walk out at the end. And because she's shopping for the first time, she's being really careful. I mean, she could have lifted a bunch of those sneakers and it would still work. Um, and you see that she's now looking at the app because, you know, she's during those points of, of, of the journey where you feel that you want more confidence right you want to look at the app and see for example that you return something to the to the shelf that it's no longer in your basket or that you got your promotion um so she's kind of glued to her phone looking at the real-time events as she shops max was just looking to see that it's working he's grabbing a few items um very different shopping journeys for the two of them um and she's been pre-authorized, so basically she could just now walk out, but naturally this is another point in time where the consumer typically wants to see what's in the basket, scroll up and down and feel more comfortable. And that's also another perfect opportunity for an item recommendation or a reminder, for example, right? We saw that you just, um, um, you have in your basket the spaghetti and, um, and minced meat, so maybe you also want uh, chopped tomatoes, it looks like you're making a bolognese. Or if you told us that you are vegan, maybe you know you want the vegan alternative and so on. So um, again, that one last time she just looks at the basket and basically all she needs to do is walk out. And she gets her digital receipt immediately as she leaves. And Max, for example, is a student, doesn't want to use the same card every time. So he's going, he chose which card he's going to pay with, he's putting his sort of um authorization code in, authentication code, scans the QR code and can just walk out. So again, I mean, in, in that specific footprint, we, we didn't have room for a kiosk and it is our employees. So, you know, it was a good opportunity to let them all use the app and try the app. Um, but we could have done a check-in uh, at the kiosk or just walking in and then everybody paying on the phone and then you don't need to check in, you just need to scan a QR code to check out. So the flexibility is there. Just... Thank you so much for sharing that. It worked well. These things don't always work on, uh, on screen shares or conferences, but now that worked brilliantly. How does it work? So um, it's a combination of technology. On one hand, it's using our orchestration service, uh, Go service. And on the other hand, we're using partner technology, uh, sending events to our open API. So we're using shelf sensor technology from Shekel to identify the items. And we're using LiDAR technology to track the consumer. Now, they um, send us uh, an event that says, you know, this item was taken by 
that tokenized customer, that tokenized consumer, and we build a basket. So we add the item to the basket, we do the calculation, we add the promotion, tax, you know, everything that is required and visualize that to the consumer as they shop. So what are the other advantages to this technology combination? So because we chose to use LiDAR and shelf sensors and not computer vision, there are some inherent advantages. So uh, for example, there is increased privacy because there is no footage. It's laser-based. There is no footage of the consumer at any point during their journey. So if they don't consent to share information, um, there is no footage of them and you don't know who it was that was shopping. So their privacy is increased. And especially, you know, with a lot of our customers in the Dach area, <laughs> it's a big, big point there. Um, the other thing is because it's um, LiDAR based is a not video, um, the total cost of ownership is, is lower. You, you don't need that level of huge computing processing like you do with graphic videos. And that also allows the real time events because the identification and um, the tracking of the consumer is, doesn't need to go through that heavy processing. And also that kind of reduces the time to market of new products. When you put a new item, you want to put a new item in the store. Um, you don't need hundreds of images. You don't need to teach the system how to identify the item based on video. You start with a few weight samples and you're good to go. Um, there are some other advantages. So for example, ambience and lighting um, in laser-based solutions like LiDAR, they create their own light. So you know, you don't need special lighting in the store. Actually, it can work in the dark. You need lighting for the consumers. Um, and you can use the same lighting and ambience that you have in any other store. And also, LiDAR typically is placed much higher um, up than cameras. So it's not as intrusive. I don't know if you've been to a ghost store, but it, it's, it, you don't see kind of a lot of cameras close to your head um, um, in, the, in the store. Um, I mean, there are many advantages for this combination, but I think something that's important to mention is uh, we are hardware agnostic. So we're hardware agnostic in all our uh, touch points, and it's the same also in the Go store. So should the retailer prefer to use uh, com computer vision, for example, and they, you know, there are solutions out there that can provide the right accuracy, um, then it's not a problem. We can work with uh, another combination. Thank you so much. So what should the first step uh, be that a retailer can take in that direction? So I think it's really kind of first going back to the basics. So looking at your brand, it's the expectation from your brand, how you want to differentiate your grow store, and then looking into technology that really offers them and enables them to offer that journey. And also kind of bearing in mind that it needs to be flexible enough that they can change it as they go. Because, you know, and, and people, uh, retailers that already have Go stores will tell you, you learn a lot once you start interacting with consumers, you learn the different types of exception, you learn more about the expectations of your consumers and, um, you know, they will want to change. So you don't want that rigidity. So they need to look in a solution that fits now and can also change in the future. And also, you know, different solutions um, and, and different flows will fit different locations. So for example, you know, in your neighborhood store where you have repeat footfall, loyal customers, people who already use your app anyway, you probably want to kind of offer highly personalized experience with a lot of information and make it really easy for those repeat loyal customers to use the Go store. But if you're talking about a micro uh, store at an airport where most of customers, you know, are not the ones that shop with you all the time, you probably want to offer an appless option as well um, in order not to deter them from entering the store. Um, and there are other things, I mean, think about cash option. So if you have a hypermarket, you probably want to also offer a cash option in your grocery store. But if you're talking about a segment of the store or you know a container somewhere, a capsule somewhere that is available out of normal operating hours, you probably don't want to have to handle cash recyclers and uh, cash you know problems overnight. So you need that flexibility uh, and, and a solution that can fit all those different journeys and all those different locations. And normally our first step with the retailers will be actually to you know, flash this out, do a discovery session, look into what they want to achieve and then fit the right technology and journey to them. 
Thank you. And so let's start to really sum this up for our audience. And, and by the way, um, lots of really positive comments in the chat about people enjoying the session. So thank you very much. So sum this up for us. Um, so I think um, if we wanted to sum it up, it's basically that um, ghost stores are great. <laughs> They're great for your brand. You know, to begin with, that's a good start, as you said. Um, and they are removing this unnecessary friction from the consumer journey. And they, they, they provide an option where nobody needs to do chores that nobody likes, like scanning items or queuing to pay. And when they're done right, they also allow retailers that flexible shopping journey, being able to show consumers information exactly personalized to them in real time as they shop, and let them know about their basket as they go. Um, and then I think last but not least, retailers can really now start leveraging this to provide a goal journey that really reflects their brand, that, that differentiates them and fits their brand identity um, and meet their consumer expectations. And there's, there's also a way to enhance, I believe as well, where, you know, for example, order items that aren't at the store to be delivered or collected yeah so so if you think about it you're point spot on right so you're already in the store you have an app you're walking around we're all used now to saying hey this item i actually prefer to collect i want it curbside pickup it's heavy i'm not going to take it now yeah so you want to be able to carry actions on the app as you're in the store to say hey this item please deliver to my house or maybe something is is not there you know it's missing it's out of stock so you want to um, you want to be able to order that item to receive it later. Um, you want to be able to kind of see how you're doing against your shopping list. There is a lot that you can do whilst you have this real time interaction with the consumer as they shop, um, which becomes available. And and from personalization perspective, I mean, think about it. You know where the consumer is. You know what's in their basket. If they consented, you also know who they are. You know their shopping history. You know their preferences. What they told you, right? Are they vegan, halal, kosher, and um, you know, so there is so much more that you can do to personalize and improve their shopping journey by making not like nuisance, you know, offers, but really timely, relevant item recommendations and, and um, information uh, that meets them and, and, and their, their needs. Yeah? For example, show them where the vegan items are, you know where everything is in the store, visualize it, make it easier for them to find the items on their shopping list. I can go all day. I mean, there's so much more that you can do once you really allow this real-time event and you move away from just walking out and only communicating the basket to the consumer after they've left the store. All right, thank you so much. Are you happy for people to reach out on LinkedIn if they want to contact you more? Yeah, sure. I mean, if um, if the uh, we have questions and, and comments, happy to hear them now and also, of course, um, on LinkedIn. Also, if all we've had so far is just very positive comments about the session itself, but no questions have come in. And actually, our timing wise, we are due to to close things up. So it's been yeah. perfect. We've um, we've had half an hour fly by with some fantastic content from you and even the video worked. So, hey, yeah, Darren, that was uh, so cool. Right? But absolutely. So life is good. But no, I just want to thank you for being such a brilliant close to what's been uh, a brilliant session for the Retail Bulletin all day. We've, um, we've had four fantastic sessions. We normally start with a fireside chat, so we thought we'd mix it up and go for a closing fireside chat. Our audience stayed with us. They really enjoyed it, and I think it's a, bu a beautiful way to wrap up um, our four sessions today. So thank you, Orit, and uh, also to GK for spending time with us today. And... Um, that's it. It's a wrap. Until our next sessions in June, check out the Retail Bulletin calendar. But for now, uh, all it remains to me to say is thanks again to Orit for a brilliant closing session. And we are done from the Retail Bulletin for today. Thanks for staying with us. Have a Thank great you, day. Thank you, Brilliant day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.